as the holidays are approaching, many of us are thinking about some upcoming travel plans. And we've probably heard there's a lot of new rules and regulations, but one area of aspect that you're not thinking about is probably that fruit or vegetable that you might be packing as a snack. Today joining us is the U.S. Customs and Border Protection Chief Agriculture Specialist, Ginger Harrell Lopez. Ginger, thank you so much for coming all the way up here to Stillwater. You thank guys you. are out of Dallas, am I correct on this? That's correct. We're stationed at Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport. So tell us a little bit about what your agency does in protecting agriculture. Well, we are CBP Agriculture Specialists. It's our job to protect American agriculture. And how we do that is by conducting inspections at ports of entry. Um, we inspect passengers, um, international passengers, international cargo, mail, express consignment, and at seaports as well. So there's a lot going on that's coming into our ports and our airports. Tell us a little bit about what all y'all are looking for and the volume that you're looking at. Um, exactly. This is the peak time of year for both shipments um, because of the holiday season and holiday travel. Um, one of the things that we look at is prohibited agriculture commodities. So that could be things that are brought by passengers in their luggage, fruits, vegetables, meats, plants, seeds. Um, that could also be uh, cargo, um, things that might, hand, might carry um, agriculture pests. So I think a lot of times, you know, I don't mean any harm. I'm taking my apple. I'm going to eat it on the plane, but you might stop me. Talk to me about why an apple could be harmful. Okay, first thing is a lot of things are regulated and some things are allowed, some things are prohibited. So what we encourage people to do is just declare any agriculture product that you're bringing. Mm -hmm. um, either at the port of entry when you go through, you may have go through an automated kiosk. Mm -hmm. um, you can report that on the kiosk or when you talk to a Customs and Water Protection Officer, just tell them what you're bringing. Um, the apples itself could harbor a plant pest or disease. A lot of times meat products may harbor a foreign animal disease that we don't have here in the U.S. And so that's something that we want to prevent, the introduction of a foreign disease or pest. So we will be inspecting agriculture items. So you're not just looking at fruits and vegetables, you're also looking at seeds, is that correct? And in holiday decorations even? That's right. Um, any kind of agriculture product, that could be plants, uh, seeds, it could be wooden craft items, um, things for holiday de decorations that folks may bring. All the things uh, we inspect for plant pests and diseases. So what are some of the things that you're looking for? And I know there's sometimes uh, potential hazards in Florida that aren't in Oklahoma. How do you regulate that? And who tells you what to be checking for? <laughs> um, USDA, U.S. Department of Agriculture, sets all of our regulations and the rules and regulations. CBP just enforces those at ports of entry. So what if a traveler has a question about what they're taking? Can they find out information somewhere? Sure. CBP has a website, cbp.gov. And there's also a great website called don'tpackapest.com. It also has a great agriculture explanation about our rules and regulations. So when we're talking about what y'all are doing in the airports, is that just international flights or domestic flights too? That's correct. We work international travelers, um, people that are coming to the U.S. from foreign countries. Okay, so this is a lot of, I mean, you think about all the flights that are happening, all the cargo coming in. How many of there are you? <laughs> There's around 2,400 agriculture specialists that are spread throughout the nation and they work at various ports of entry. Wow, okay. Mm -hmm. So is it just all manpower that's inspecting all of this? Well, uh, we have a lot of tools at our disposal. One of those is our Beagle Brigade. It's a detector dog system that we use to detect uh, prohibited agriculture products. This is canine Merla, and she is trained to sniff out prohibited agriculture products, things like uh, fresh fruits and vegetables and meats. Okay, so she is a working dog. May I pet her? Yes, you can. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about her um, work day and how that looks. So her workday is spent uh, in the baggage area for the most part. So where you would be coming from an international part, you come in, you pick up your bags, that's where you're gonna see us working. She works on the belt as the bags are going by. If there's luggage on the floor, she works that too. And she will go up to people carrying their bags, wheelchairs, if people have bags on carts, she will search it all. She'll okay. try to get to it, yes. Excellent, mm -hmm. so tell me, what is she, she's looking for fruits, vegetables, mm -hmm. meats. She's been trained with these different smells. First of all, why a beagle? Um, and do you have other dogs that you employ as well? So beagles were picked because they're very people friendly. Uh, they look non-aggressive, they look approachable, so they're not gonna scare any passengers. Uh, they're very food motivated, okay. so it's easy to train them to find something if they get a reward, which is a treat for that. 
and they also have a great sense of smell being uh, coming from a working dog. Okay. They can smell anything, basically. All right, and do you guys also use other breeds of dogs? Or? We do. Uh, we use breeds like labs and lab mixes, and that we use uh, in the cargo areas and on the land border. They're more suited to getting up into cars, into containers to search for prohibited agriculture products. Okay, so obviously dogs have a great sense of smell, so mm -hmm. they can detect things that maybe we couldn't as humans, but there's a lot of training that goes into being ready to go into work, right? Yes, there is. Tell me a little bit about that uh, training that is involved. So their training is at a training center. It's uh, 10 weeks long for when you're a new handler and you train with your dog. They're partially trained already. Basically, we start off easy, you know, just to teach the dog to sit. Uh -huh. And then we move it up to teaching the dog to sit on a specific scent. And then from there, we just extrapolate, you know, start searching. If they find something that they know, oh, I sit when I smell this, I get a treat and we just go from there. And it's a continuous process. They keep learning. And once we get to the airport where we are, they start trying to sit on things that they weren't trained on to see okay. if they can get a treat. Oh, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. And I would imagine, so the pest list is always changing. There's new problems that might be encountered in agriculture in other countries. Mm -hmm. How do you keep training that dog? Is there a continuing ed? <laughs> there is. Uh, it's more based on the dog learning. You can specifically teach them things, mm -hmm. but just throughout our day, say she's never smelled um, before tree tomatoes, and she just found that the other day. That's not something she's ever found, but when she smelled the bag, she sat immediately. And when I looked in there, there was nothing in there that she had been trained on. Oh, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. But she did recognize but it. But she recognized that this might be something that I'll get a treat for, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so maybe she's a little excited to get that treat, huh? Oh, very excited, yes. <laughs> so tell me a little bit, obviously this involves you training also with her. Mm -hmm. What's kind of your background? Are you patrol or are you agriculture specialist? Tell me about your background a little so bit. So I am a CBP agriculture specialist. Uh, mm -hmm. My background actually is just in biology. I have a biology major and I didn't know about this job until my friend introduced me to it and I thought I could do that and here I am. So is there a lot of training that goes into this? I mean, you're a federal employee, is that correct? Yes. And what, what's the process if somebody was interested in the College of Ag to go into this career? Sure, yeah, the process uh, does take a little while. Being a federal job, you can look on usajobs.gov and you can look for agriculture specialists, just type that in there. The process is a, a little long. You go through a background investigation and everything like that. And then once you are picked up, you go through more training. Uh, and if you pass the training, then you're an agriculture specialist. So it does take quite a while. It's probably more than a year's process. Excellent. Well, mm -hmm. it's very impressive what you do. And uh, Merla is doing a great job. Thank you so much for sharing this information with us today. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this video as part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on the OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.